What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video and today we are live on the test server to showcase the two new champions in Owella the Sylvan Watcher who aesthetic wise looks amazing alongside her partner ability champion in Altered of the Shell who was previously in the Sylvan Watchers, they moved him to the Dark Hells and now he's just in a darker place at the moment. But first and foremost, I hope everyone's keeping well today. I've just come back from the dentist and I feel like I've been punched up by Mike Tyson for 15 rounds. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully I can speak for long enough to get through this video today. So all right, basically what I'm going to be doing is trying to partner up their abilities, seeing the unique ways you can use them, take them into the Iron Twins Fortress. We're going to take Alton into the Faction Wars, talk about ways you can use it in the Hydra Boss and Arena Battles and just the overall utility of them as a pairing. And also, separately, for anybody that just went for Alton of the Shell or pulled him from a shard or during that champion training tournament by coming top place. And also, if you just pull an Oella from the Fusion, but you didn't have the luxury of going for an Alton or don't have one yet. And guys, if you are just interested in the showcase segment of this video, I will be timelining below the kind of places that we are going to be going into. So feel free to go along, check out those places if you're not interested in the deep dive of the kit. But of course, if you're going to stay tuned for this, I would appreciate it. All right. A1 skill under the skin attacks one enemy two times and each hit has a 40-50% chance of placing a 60% drop defense debuff for two turns once booked. And each hit will ignore a 50% of the target's resistance if Owella is on the same team. Now, this is good for specific bosses, right? Now, hypothetically, the um, Sorath, the Ice Spider, where the resistance is huge. Or taking on specific arena champions, right? Like a Duchess, for instance. Trying to, like, place a drop defense there. Like, it can have its uses, but being a single target, I'm not sure if it's going to be super useful for a vast majority of the player base. But being able to drop down those accuracy stats, pump more of those stats into the damage, and still being able to get through and place that drop defense can have its uses in specific areas, right? Um, if the target is under an increased defense buff, each it has a 100% chance once booked of removing it, and this effect cannot be resisted. And it's good. I prefer him to maybe steal some buffs and not get resisted, or something along those lines, because increased defense is... Narrowing it down to a very slim area in the game, possibly that arena or some Doom Tower scenarios, right? But it is what it is, a pretty good A1 here, and it does hit twice, which is pretty good for damage. On the A2 with the Resurging Reversal, removes all debuffs from this champion and heals this champion by 20% of their max HP for each debuff removed. Now, it's a little bit of a sticky one. Now, I was reading this like... Why would I want a bunch of debuffs on my champion? But then there is places in the game such as the Spider's Lair, right? There's places like the Never Spider as well where you get so many debuffs and it's a way to cleanse himself while it's actually increasing his damage in the second part of this skill set. So I'd say it's very niche, but if you do manage to proc it, he actually does um, smack significantly hard is what I was trying to say. Um, he would then place a shield buff on this champion for two turns, and the value of this shield is equal to any surplus heal from this skill. So let's just say you've got a bunch of debuffs on, right? You manage to heal this champion by 20% of their max HP for each debuff. You're now full HP, but then the surplus will kind of add into that with the shield values. Just adding to extra sustainability there. He will finally attack one enemy and will ignore shield buffs. Damage increases by 20% for each debuff removed by this skill. So once again, like you're kind of banking on him to have debuffs. And I'm just trying to think like what kind of scenarios are we going to be benefiting apart from the Doom Tower scenarios that I mentioned earlier. Maybe some potential go second arena teams, right? And that's kind of why I put him in a Swift Perry set today. Because I felt like if we want to try and get some debuffs on for the purely the showcase, I want to have a bit of RNG to be able to survive, right? It's like, we never want debuffs on our champions, so... I think it's good for Doom Tower, like, in particular. Like, being able to, like, cleanse himself, have some self-sustain, smack harder. I don't know, we'll play test it today, guys. I've not had too much playtesting, but that's kind of how I'm reading it from first glance. And then on the Somnolent Spores, attacks all enemies and has a 100% chance to place a sleep debuff for one turn. Um, could have its uses in places such as the Arena for CC, right? So if you don't have a champion such as a Kaimov, for instance, and you're looking for a strong sleep champion, 
Look no further than somebody like an Alton of the Shell to fulfill that role for you. And you will also ignore 50% of the target's resistance if her partnership champion in Oella is on the same team. So really pairing them together is going to allow you to have less accuracy stats, focus on those damage stats and still be able to come through and potentially place those sleep debuffs. Now what I would love to see is, cannot be resisted if Oella is on the same team and I think that would have a lot more impact, right? Uh, being a bit of a damage dealer here, but it's okay, I guess. Um, fills this champion's turn meter by 15% whenever a sleep debuff placed by this skill expires, which will be a 60% in those classic arena battles where you're facing those four oppositions, or in the wave-based content when you're facing five enemies, um, you can see up to a, what is that, a 75% chance of a turn meter fill granted that you place the sleep buff and it gets expired. And this will kind of keep you in that rhythm of being able to lead into the A1, lead into the A2, because they're going to consistently being um, slept, woken up, increasing his turn meter, and keeping him going. Um, on the passive with Metabolism, has a 15% chance of decreasing the cooldown of one of this champion's skills by one turn every time they are healed by a continuous heal buff, and the chance increases by 30% if a Weller is on the same team. So this means that bringing in continuous heal champions, you will see a great value with cooldowns. But if you actually do that partnership ability, you'll get an extra value of this. And she actually brings continuous heals in her kit as well, making it a perfect pairing. Um, overall, my overall thoughts on this champion, I think he is decent. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I'm not sure if anyone disagrees with me. I don't think he's the game-changing champion. I think he's a fun one that has potential to hit hard in specific niche scenarios with some former CC, which I'm always a big fan of. But I feel like with damage dealers, it's really hard to get your accuracy stats alongside your damage dealing stats. And I think that the pairing makes him good, right? Because it kind of mitigates some of that pain away with ignoring 50% of the target's resistance, meaning you don't have to go so heavy on those accuracy stats. So I like what they've tried to do here. It is a step in the right direction of building a kind of hybrid champion, the best of both worlds, dealing CC and damage. I just think that it could have been a little bit better of cannot be resisted instead of just ignoring a portion of the resistance to make sure that you don't need any accuracy on this champion, right? Um, oh, well, uh, to briefly break it down, um, I have got her in a regeneration build, but with her kit, with the Flutter Fluster, attacks one enemy and has a 100% chance, once booked, of applying the big version of the decreased speed debuff for two turns, and this debuff cannot be resisted if Alter of the Shell is on the same team. Now, if you are struggling with places such as the Iron Twins Fortress, right, and you really want to place those decreased speed debuffs, and your account just doesn't allow you to reach those speed thresholds, then this champion is going to be amazing, granted you've got the partnership ability, okay? Because if you don't have Altered of the Shell on the same team, you will actually need accuracy to place this, meaning that the true value of this A1 drops all the way down for me. Now, it's still very consistent, right? It doesn't get better than a 100% chance on an A1 skill to place that decreased speed. But it is a single target and it will require accuracy if you're not partnering these skills. On the hand of Spring, um, a pretty decent skill, very similar to a Godseeker Aniri, but just a bonus uh, value on the heal value. Um, heals all ally by 30% of their max HP and increases the duration of ally buffs by one turn. So talk about Sanlash Survivor, Anchorite, Godseeker Aniri, and all of these extended champions. They can really fulfill this role, being the epic rarity, meaning that you don't have to pump in legendary skill tomes to do so. But... <sighs> It's really hard because Godseek Neri has half the heal value and it's based off their max HP, not this champion's max HP. But at the same time, it's like in places like the Hydra boss, if you're facing the head of Torment, sometimes you don't want to hit the enemies with an AoE to kind of stop that true fear coming through. So I think it can have its uses, right? But then in other scenarios, you do want the Warmaster procs from like a Godseek Neri. But overall, as a skill, it's a good one on a free turn cooldown. With the Morphosis, fills this champion's turn meter and all allies by 30% and places a 50% increased resistance buff on all allies for two turns. Very strong skill set, guys. On par with somebody like an Arbiter, enabling double turn meter compositions in the arena, bringing them into the Iron Twins Fortress, bringing them into the Hydra boss, right? And really has a versatility with the ways you can bring this in. But those two places that I keep talking about, Hydra and Iron Twins Fortress, awesome arena battles 
are the three kind of key components where the increased resistance can come into play. But granted that your other champions have some decent resistance on as well. Because just placing this doesn't guarantee that the Head of Mischief is not going to swipe up some of your buffs, right? But if you do happen to have a decent amount of resistance and you get your champions correctly, especially in progression, I think you see a true value, then this actually does start to become impactful. And then you place the increased resistance, you lead into the A2 skill, you increase the duration, keeping it up on time, place that decreased speed, and then you kind of find yourself in that rhythm of a nice balanced skill set. On the Untrammeled, whenever an ally loses 15% of their max HP from a single hit, we'll place a 15% continuous heal buff on that ally for one turn, and place a 15% continuous heal buff for two turns on the ally, then instantly activates if all 10 of the shell is on the same team and can only occur to once per ally's turn. Now, talk about a whopper of um, ability once you start pairing, right? And this is what I keep banging on about. This champion flatline without the partnership ability is average. And that's just my personal opinion, guys. There is so many champions that can fill your turn meter. There is so many champions that can increase your duration. And there's so many champions such as Stagnite, you can place a decrease speed. Granted, it's on a lower chance. But once you start pairing them together, I really do feel like they're pretty remarkable and can be utilized for a vast majority of players out there. So, okay, um, that out of the way. Um, the way that I've geared them out is a regeneration build I'm trying to add to her sustainability and heal by every turn to make sure that she's staying on top of her healing. We've then got some defense percent, some HP percent in there with some protection gear that's allowing me to get some resistance and HP percent. We are leading in with some resistance on the banners, HP on the amulets and defense on the ring. And overall stats, I've gone for a blend of HP percent at 70k, 3.4k on the defense which is decent. We're going pretty speedy at 244. Crit rate and crit damage I have not got a care in the world for. And then we've gone for a high amount of resistance at 482. Banking on that increased resistance to kind of resist those Iron Brand debuffs from the Iron Twins Fortress. And accuracy I have dropped all the way down just to prove that pairing of the non-resistible on the A1. On the Masteries I've just gone for a blend of defense heading down to resistance and the support tree. Trying to get some extra max HP. Add to a heal values alongside the Spirit Haste in case somebody dies. Altered up to Shell, we've got me that Swift Perry. I mentioned it earlier. In, during this showcase, I'm really hoping that we can stack those debuffs, get mitigated, cleanse himself, and really make use of that A2 skill. So we're just trying to get that 50% chance of unkillable with a fatal hit. Then we've gone for like crit damage on the gauntlets, attack percent on the chest plate, attack percent on the boots with a speed ascension. We've gone for attack, we've gone for crit damage, we've gone for attack. We're trying to beast them up as much as possible. Masteries, I have headed down to the Helm Smasher, of course. We're trying to ignore some defense alongside the defensive tree to try and proc some counterattacks and just add to his sustainability. And yeah, that's pretty much the gear, the stats, and the masteries, and everything I'm going to be using in this showcase. And let's get straight into the showcase, guys. So the first place we're going to head into is going to be the Iron Twins Fortress. Now, one thing that I wanted to kind of showcase here is, and I've actually got a video pre-recorded from yesterday... That just because it says cannot be resisted does not mean that you cannot land weak hits, okay? So being the magic affinity can be detrimental in your composition in a reliable decrease speed. So if you're banking on that, it might not come into play as much as you want it to. But also being able to cycle through those abilities and not proc the passive of the boss itself when you're dealing the raw damage. Unless you've got a Geomancer to bypass that actually starts to become very tedious so hopefully we can showcase that in this run uh, because Alton of the Shell is going to be dealing that raw damage and you'll see that decrease speed fall off so there we go we're kind of filling our turn meters and unless we got the decrease speed out well there we go we managed to land it there so boom we've got no burns out yet that's fine resisted is okay See, this is the thing. I really wish that it could not be resisted on the A1. And I feel like the A1 of Ultan would actually have a lot of value with that drop defense. Look at that, resisted. So because we don't have a lot of accuracy on him, we're not seeing that value there, right? So boom. That's fine. I'll show you a better run after this. We've got some drop defense there. Could be a 3% chance. So there's the burns. Decrease speed going through. So hopefully we can deal some raw damage here. And bypass that passive. Come on, Alton. We want you to smack. Oops. He's coming in. 
There we go. See that? Cleanse the decreased speed. And now if you don't, if you've got it kind of in a preset way, and then she goes in now with the increased term meter, then the increased resistance, and you know, extending everything on the A2, then you actually got two turns without a decreased speed debuff. So having full coverage is actually very important. So while this is going on, just to kind of explain what I'm talking about, this is a perfect scenario. So now we're facing the spirit affinity. Because we're actually placing that dec decreased speed, we've got the true values of everything. You see how much better of value it will have. So boom, boom, that's fine. Burn's going out. The crease speed is always going to place because we're not landing weak hits here at all. Burns are going to go through. We're bypassing the passive of Geomancer. Increased resistance. And now hopefully the Iron Brand debuffs don't get spread. So we don't take as much of a smack once it goes down to that threshold of 40%. I believe it's called the Vengeance passive. So here, Burns going through, bypassing here. And if you see here, the Iron Brand debuffs is only at a 5 stack because of that first turn. But now, because the increased resistance is on, we're hardly going to be getting taken through here. There we go, resisted. And now those Iron Brand debuffs are stacking all the way down, allowing her to survive. And she shouldn't have a problem alongside Mithrala Lifebane to really get through this very well. So I feel like this pairing is really good, right? But Alternate the Shell is kind of somebody just enabling... Those kind of things. But the continuous heal instantly activations are really cool as well. So watch when a champion takes a turn. Instantly activates will be nice. Boom. When they take some damage. Nice. See that there guys? Keeping us topped up. So traditionally I'm using a Sky Touch Shaman in a team like this. But this is actually working out a lot smoother with this pairing. Because of the ways that a continuous heal are instantly activating and pairing together. There's some drop defense. Extensions. We actually got double extensions now. So that increased resistance with a Godseek Canary is actually very impactful here. Pretty much will never drop off the whole duration of the fight. See that there? Swift Perry set really protecting him. So I think like for PvE content in particular, pretty good gear set to put on him, in my opinion. Look at all those continuous heals, man. If only he dealt damage based on the amount of buffs, he'll be smacking like a truck right now. So boom, and we came through with a 1 minute 59 farm time on the Iron Twins 15, okay? Uh, pretty decent, but look at the heals, guys. 1.07 million damage or heals there. Pretty impressive. Now, how is the other run getting on? 3 minutes 40, everybody's dead. And this is the brute reality of something that can happen, right? So let's just take control. I'm not sure why she's not reviving. So let's just do a 1. Everyone's dead. But these guys are surviving, though. It's very impressive. Let's see how long they can actually survive. So, decreased speed going through. I don't get me wrong. This doesn't happen all the time. I'm not trying to, like, put you guys off the champion at all and stuff like that. But just be wary that against the force affinity that you can land those weak hits and it can become detrimental because it is important to know these things before diving into yourself. But as you see here, we've got no problem surviving because we've got that increased resistance, meaning that we're hardly taking any damage on this boss at all, right? So we're surviving through it, basically keeping Godseeker alive and 3.3 million heals there. So yeah, I've definitely seen two minute runs, don't get me wrong, with the same team. But just kind of something to pay in mind of stuff that can happen. Especially with Ultime being not a really tanky champion. Okay, so next up we're going to head into the Dragon's Lair. And we're going to go into some playtesting, okay? So we're going to go through some damage first. I've set up a little scenario for stage 25. I'm going to try stack as many debuffs on us as possible, okay? Let's see how much damage we could do with just Alton of the Shell. So we're going to go with a increased attack buff. And you'll see here, because we don't have a Weller in the same team... Actually, we can just get the poisons on now. Because we don't have a Weller on the same team and we don't have enough accuracy... We're not going to place all of those sleep debuffs all of the time because he will get resisted occasionally. So, pretty nice that it's on though. Pretty nice that it's on. Let's just try and get those... Oh, we got the wrong ability on. That's fine. Actually, you know. We're going to have to go out of here, guys. We're going to have to go for round two. I messed that up. Let's go again. We guys seen that there. Hopefully, we can get resisted on this next one just to showcase that. So, poisons... Go through with the sleeps. There you go. Look, a bunch of resisted. Wanted to show you a realistic showcase of what can happen. And wait, which one is it? Why am I forgetting how to do it? There we go. It's this one. 
I was thinking, which one places the debuffs on us? So now that we've got the extra debuffs on our ultimate of the shell, he should be cleansing it, coming through. We've got increased attack on. We've got triple poisons. So we've got a bunch of debuffs. We're dealing bonus damage alongside the poison of Bad Elkazar. We're now going to remove all debuffs. And the damage is going to increase by 20% for each debuff removed. So it should be a 60% increase with the free poison debuffs. Get it down to a one speed. Let's attack Sentinel. Right? Let's go. Boom. 200,000. Now, that is pretty decent, right? Really, really good. But I wouldn't say it's like bonkers, out of this mind. But at the same time, I haven't got him in Savage. Bear that in mind here. We're not ignoring super defense. But it's good. It is really good in terms of damage output. I would have expected a little bit more, in my opinion. Like, the build is not bad at all, right? In terms of the actual stats itself. Oh, no. They're sending me off. But if we head into here, Altered of the Shell, I did show this earlier, I believe, but 265% uh, crit damage, 6,200 attack. I actually should have showed this earlier. Um, 221 speed and no accuracy. So, decent stats. It's not bad at all, but I was expecting a little bit more. But Savage would have definitely added to that damage there, ignoring some extra bonus defense. So, what I want to do now is, let's head into the Dragon again. Let's go into stage... Should we want to see 25 again? Yeah, let's do it. So let's take this preset out. Where's Alton of the Shell? No, Owella. Let's get Owella in there. Owella, boom. And we're just going to go for like a standard team, right? Let's see how much their pairings and the continuous heals can really keep them alive in a comp like this. Our stage 25, bear that in mind. And now because we've got Owella in, we're ignoring that resistance, allowing us to place those decreased speeds a lot more efficiently. And this is where I'm saying, guys, the pairing is where the value comes from, right? It's like, do you really want to deal a damage, build a damage dealer as a hybrid? I don't think you guys do. So definitely having both is so good, man. Like for me personally as a player, I do like CC and damage because in the Doom Tower, can you imagine this pairing? It's going to be huge for players, right? Sleeps, not needing as much accuracy, damage dealers. There's just so much going on and support as well. It's a good option. Look at this. Boom. Drop defense and weaken. Like 50 seconds for the first wave. Okay, let's go. So going into wave two now. Drop defense and weaken. Increase resistance. Boom, placing those sleeps. Keeping them under control. Waking them up is fine. Wow, let's go. 81,000 there. Not too bad at all. And then hopefully, because he's going to be increasing his turn meter, as you see there, every single time that they are woken up or expires... He's going to be filling his turn meter, getting around to his skill again. And then hopefully the decreased speed can go out on the next one. I wish it wasn't a free turn though. I'm not going to lie. But it's going to be coming through now, hopefully. Boom. Beautiful. I like the synergy. I really do. Nothing crazy, but it's fun, right? Right, nice. Boom, boom. No problems whatsoever. This is really impressive for stage 25. Granted, it's very intensive in terms of gear. I agree. Well, it shows. Like, imagine if you start bringing in five champions in here, right? You're having a cold heart and stuff like that. If you're struggling with sustainability and you're dropping your 15% of your max HP and getting those instant activations of continuous heals, it actually starts to become really cool. So here we go. Now, let's see if we can take some actual damage here. So, boom, it's coming through. Nice. Look at those. It's, it's nice, man. We're tanking up a lot here. We don't even have decreased attack on. A couple more hits left. Drop defense and weaken. Oh, there's the brimstone. 3 minutes 43. Can we get under 4 minutes with 3 champions, please? And... Increase resistance, and there we go, guys. So we came in with a 3.5 million damage on Ultan, to be expected, alongside Lydia the Death Siren with the Smite debuff, but 1 million heals. Man, I'll leave that up to you guys to think what you think of that. <laughs> So I really wanted to showcase next in the Dark Elves faction was unfortunately the Sylvan Watches hasn't arrived yet. We're still expecting it in the foreseeable future in the next few months, potentially. But let's go into like stage 20 and take out Dark KO. Let's put Alton in there. Let's get an attack aura. Let's try smack as hard as possible, right? So let's see how valuable he can be 
But this is where I feel like, imagine if he was in the Sylvan Watchers. I feel like the value would have been so good. Like, those two champions alone would have carried the whole thing. Could be a little bit busted, right? <laughs> it could be. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There's still some buffs there. Nice. Wave 2, the Valkyries. Oof. This is the tedious wave. I don't like this one. So technically, having the Sleep Dare could have been nice. But we got the Provokes coming through from our Visits to Unbowed. Good girl, let's go. Now hopefully, can we come through with the AoE skill now? Play some Sleeps. Increasing their turn meters. So they're going to come in and take a turn beforehand now. Boom. And Sleeps going through. But we got resisted because we don't have any accuracy. <laughs> there we go. That's all good. Coming through here. Bow. Sit down. Get some more poisons out. Increase speed. And come on. Let's go. Leading into wave three against the boss. How quickly can we do this in? Can we beat my best time? I don't know, you know. I don't even know what my best time is. Let's get some drop attack, drop the fence in there. Get some provokes. Oh, block damage going through. Nice, he removed the debuffs there. Let's go. Hex going through. Big smack coming through. Kapu. Oh, why are you attacking him? You just want to ruin my showcase. What a naughty boss. But look at that damage, man. Wow. Ramping up there. Let's go. Can we get some more burns on? 170,000. This dude's smacking like a cold heart. Okay. Nice. Get free. Let's get that big, big smack in now. Double damage at around 80,000. Please give him the final hit. Yes, he's coming in. Let's go. So he came through at a best time of 2 minutes 8 seconds for me. And he had a 1.2 million damage, which is very impressive. And I think he's going to be really good for the faction wars, man. Very, very good addition for there. Um, in terms of arena of the pairing, I did have a team in mind. The problem is that all of the content creators have got some crazy teams. I can't. I don't know. Is there any teams that I can really face here? Like, for me, I always put teams like this. Like, you know, a little fun team, some Pythions, you know, Owella, Ulta, the show. Come on, guys. <laughs> Please, let us noobs have a chance to showcase these champions. Okay, so let's just try out Deadwood Jedi. Of course, we are doing the competition right now to get to Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, but can we beat him in this, please? Please! Okay. Um, let's take out... Yeah, let's... Uh, how do we go about this? Let's go recently used first. We use a... Where's Duchess? Uh, by rank. Let's get Duchess in there. Where's my main Duchess? I've lost her. Duchess! There she is. Duchess, recently used. Let's get our Oweller in there. And our Ultra of the Shell. The issue is with him, right? Is like... Or her, should I say. Is that his dungeon's only aura. So it's a bit tedious. I don't know. Okay. We're going to be taking a lot of damage here. But let's increase our turn meter. Increase our resistance. Let's get a perfect veil on so nothing gets mitigated there. Boom. Shield on. We got some poison damage on, so hopefully we can amplify a bit of damage here. Alright, so now we can extend the values of those. Alright. Boom, boom. We got stone skins everywhere, guys. Oh my god. Give me a break. Alright, there you go. Non-resistible decrease speed, though. That got through. Let's go. And, alright. Let's try to get rid of this dude now, because he's going to be annoying. Auto. Oh, it's decent. It's like, there's no drop defense in here or anything. Let's just keep locking them out. Try to deal some raw damage. Decrease speed going through. It's a lot of sustainability, though. It is a lot of sustainability. Nice. 
So I think for go second team, there's potential, right? Granted, I am using a Warlord, so it's a bit of a cheat code. But he's holding up pretty well. Like, there we go. Nice. We got to sleep out. No accuracy, remember? So now we just have to basically one by one take them out. Oh, we shouldn't have done that. Oh, no. If he dies, we're dead. If he procs that passive, we're dead. Oh, a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Oh, there we go. We can't target us now because we've got the perfect veil on. Yes, go. Well, that was fun to watch. I thought they did pretty well there. Oh, to the, the shell. Come on. Take out that underpriest Brogni. The underpants. But give me an underpriest. I'm a free to play, please. And boom. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. So he did 306 damage over the course of those turns. Pretty tanky team. Pretty happy with that. So, alright guys. That is going to be all for today's video. If you, guys, if you guys did enjoy the showcase, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I wouldn't say this is a pure guide, right? This is me just showcasing the kits, the ways that it stands out to me. I would say the Hydra boss would have some use, right? In specific comps. I think he's going to be good in... Um, the Iron Twins Fortress, progression stuff in the Doom Tower, PvP scenarios. Pretty fun. I wouldn't say the best in the game, but I'm a big fan of the two duos. Um, but yeah, if you guys did enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in a video soon. Peace.